There's a lot of crazy speculation going on right now about what's going to happen in the real estate market. A lot of people are saying, well, the market's going to crash, that's for sure. Or people are saying it's going to keep going up. And there's just a lot of speculation going back and forth. And stuck in the middle of it is you trying to decide whether or not you should buy or sell a home at the moment. My name is Jamin Gerker. I'm a realtor in South Central Alaska. And my mission is to help you to build an intentional and significant legacy for yourself and your family by coaching you in real estate. And today, we're going to be talking about what you should do with all the back and forth and the contradictory uh, predictions back and forth and try to give you some more clarity on what it is that we're seeing in the market and just kind of the real estate sector in general and let you kind of make your best decision based off of that. Before we get started though, do make sure you give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and let's go and jump into today's video. Now, I will say right now there is a ton of hype going on because we have a lot of people who have decided that they know exactly how to predict when the next market downturn is going to happen. And a lot of these people, they have been just touting that the market's going to collapse, it's going to collapse, it's going to collapse. You go back, you do a little research on them, you find out they've actually been predicting this is going to happen for a long, 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 long time. And the reason and kind of the advantage you have is if you're predicting something like that is eventually you're going to be right. You know, eventually there's going to be some kind of a downturn. But you know, eventually doesn't really help you make a decision right now. So I've seen a lot of people make big decisions based upon, you know, what the theories were at the, the 30,000 foot view. But the problem is with the 30,000 foot view is it doesn't show you actually what the ground is, like the actual reality you're having to deal with on the ground. It doesn't show you that. And, you know, I'd say eventually, yes, there's going to be some kind of a cooling down it's not going to just continue in this status forever. I think that's foolhardy that anyone would think that where we're at right now um, at any point in time is going to be just the expectation or even the preference that it stays that way forever. I, I think that's, I don't know, it seems like it's pretty unique that people would, would think that. Um, but yes, you get a certain group of people out there that are convinced that they're old, that they're going to be able to predict it and that they're going to be able to say uh, when it was because, you know, they've been saying that for a while and eventually they're going to be right. Unfortunately, the credibility doesn't take too much of a hit when it turns out to be wrong. So there's that. So looking at this market specifically, should we be concerned about a crash? I personally do not think so. I am still buying properties as much as I can. And the reason for that is because one, the inventory is low. So I'm not foreseeing any kind of a collapse in the market anytime soon because you know, while the inventory is really low, I don't really see that happening. And number two, you know, we are still seeing the demand remaining pretty strong. You know, the millennial generation in this past couple of years decided they want to buy houses and not all of them got houses to say the least in the past couple of years when the interest rates were really low. And so they're still out there trying to buy as much as they can. And so that demand is going to remain there for the foreseeable future from what I can see. So that being said, though, a lot of people are looking online and they're like, well, I'm seeing price drops all over the place and I'm seeing property staying on the market longer. So that's clearly a sign that the market's softening up and we are going to see a crash here eventually, is what they're saying. What goes up must come down, which is not an actual economic principle, by the way. So are we in fact seeing prices coming down? Well, um, we'll answer that in just a minute. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and take a quick break. If you haven't done so recently, you might want to go check out my, uh, my podcast called the Alaskan Journey Podcast. I interview people who are currently living here. And actually, I did recently just interview a um, an economist with the state. And we talked about the rental market. So if you are a, a landlord, that might be something you want to go check out. Now, let's go and jump it into the rest of the video and answer that question. Are we in fact seeing a collapse of the market prices here in the area? So the reason that a lot of people are seeing what they think are prices coming down is realistically because a lot of sellers are still pricing their houses as if the market was appreciating as quickly and with as much ferocity as it was this time last year. Because this time last year, we still had a lot of heat going on and you could put it on there at any old price and buyers would still come and bid it up, you know, which the appraiser would come in afterwards and kind of be the great equalizer and bring all the offers down to the same amount anyway. But that's where stuff like the appraisal gap and stuff like that really came into effect. So, 
You see a lot of sellers trying to price as though, you know, the market is still the market that their neighbors sold their property in. So they're still expecting that. And that's not really the market that we're in anymore. We're still seeing um, a lot of pretty aggressive pricing. And for that reason, you're starting to see some more days on market. So what is the average sold price though? Are we seeing that softening up? Well, actually, no. If anything, we're seeing the rate at which things are increasing has actually gone up. For example, the average sold price in Anchorage went from 6.9% year over year, increased average sold price compared to the last year, to 7.9 year to date this year. Okay, so that's actually gone up. In Eagle River, we've seen it go from, I think it's 8.36, if I recall correctly, to just under 11% increase for the average sold price. Let's take a break real quick. If you've been watching this channel for any amount of time, you do know that I focus primarily on the South Central Alaska area. And while that's going to remain the case moving forward, we are actually going to be partnering with our colleagues across the entire state to bring you market updates for what's going on inside the markets of each one of the big market centers here in the state of Alaska, looking at Fairbanks, Kenai, Homer, Kodiak, and Juno slash the Southeast area. So this is going to be a very exciting project called the Trailblazer Project. I've not seen this done in any other state before where we are bringing you all the market updates for the entire state under the roof of one channel. So this is going to be a, a lot of fun. So when you guys are seeing market updates coming from you know people who aren't just me on the channel, you know what's going on there. Um, if you guys are really nice, then we might actually be able to convince some of these folks to actually provide some more content and talk specifically about what it's like living in their market. So when you see these videos pop up, make sure to jump over there, give them plenty of likes, plenty of love, give them lots of comments. And um, yeah, just know that that's uh, fulfilling kind of the mission we still have on the YouTube channel to help you build an intentional and significant legacy for yourself and your family by coaching you in real estate, whether that be in South Central Alaska or anywhere else in Alaska that we have our colleagues in at the moment. So just want to make you aware of that. And let's go and finish today's video. And last but not least, actually, the Matsu Valley is the only one where we saw it kind of come down a little bit, but that's because it was at an unsustainable 15% increase year over year for the average sold price the previous year. This year, it's sitting at like only 11%. So double digit appreciation is still doing really well. And honestly, I'd much rather see that than 15% because, you know, good things usually don't happen in a market where it's going up quite that aggressively long term. Okay, it's okay for a short term, but not good long term. How do we interpret this data here? Well, really, the big thing is, as long as the inventory remains pretty low, which that's realistically what we're going to see moving forward, the market appreciation and strength is going to continue probably increasing. So if you're sitting around waiting for a crash, probably you're just wasting time and you need to jump in and try to take advantage of interest rates while they're still where they're at. Because, I mean, the projection is that it's probably going to go up. We don't know for sure. I've heard rumors. Don't know for sure yet. That's not really my, uh, <clears throat> my realm or domain. But I usually just assume that buying something sooner rather than later is probably going to help me out better in the long run than trying to be too smart and time out the market. Now, for those of you who are trying to decide if you should buy or sell at the moment, for those of you who are buying, already talked about that. Sooner is probably better than later because we just don't know for sure, you know, if the interest rates are going to be going up for the people that were waiting around for a big foreclosure collapse a couple of years ago that uh, missed out on all the interest rates. They're probably weeping profusely because here's the thing. While they were waiting for the foreclosure, people like me were able to go in and buy investment properties for like a 2.7 interest rate, which they're sitting at closer to about six, six and a half percent right now. So just... Yeah, you can imagine how big of a difference that makes on an investment property that's all based off of numbers. So when in doubt, my default setting is usually to jump in there if we're looking at buying. Now, as far as the selling goes, as we've seen in the numbers, I'm not seeing any downside to, to selling right now. Um, the big thing you wanna do is make sure we are controlling the stuff that you can actually control, okay? So you control when your property goes onto the market, you control what condition it's going to be in and how we price it. What we don't control is stuff like elections. You don't control that. Don't control the interest rates and we don't control the price of oil or inflation. So control the stuff that you can and make sure that it makes sense in your life right now for you to make a move. That's really the, the most important thing that you can do because ultimately, who cares what's going on in all these other places? 
It may or may not have an impact on the sale of your home. And if you're waiting around for that stuff to make it happen, you're taking yourself out of the game all ready before you've even even left the starting blocks. You're discounting yourself already and just making it a much better environment for those who are putting their house on the market and uh, making it happen because there's not as many people selling right now because a lot of them are trying to wait and see and just see what happens, which, you know, like we said, that, create, that helps to create that shortage, which makes the prices go up. So, I sure hope this has been useful for you. If it has, give this video a like. If you have any other questions, do feel free to reach out to me on my Facebook or my website down below in the description section and be happy to be as much help as I can. Talk with you later.